If you wanted to make a disc with menus, the first thing you'd probably do is put in some chapter points. I've only got 40 seconds worth of video, so no one in the right mind will put in chapter points. But imagine I wanted to put a chapter point in just there. But then what I've got to do is to put in a marker. Now I've added this little button onto the interface to add in markers, which are chapter points. And to put it in, I'm just going to click on that button. If you haven't added this button onto the timeline, then you come up to the marker heading and say add marker or you click the V key. I'm just going to click on that button and it's going to put in a chapter point there. Move it down a bit and let's put a chapter point in there. So now I've only got 40 seconds. It's silly to put in any chapter points, but imagine it's a nice long hour. I've got a couple of chapter points. Now I might want to name those chapters. You do that by coming up to the Sequence Marker tab where you can see your two markers. And if I just double click on this one, oh, well, that's got to be Ringo. Double click on that one, that's got to be David. The words I am typing here will become the labels on the menu. I'm going to save it, pop back into the disk burner, which I'm going to get at by clicking this little icon on the player window before I went to File export burn to disk I could just click that instead it loads up the burn to disk stuff and on the face of it you can't see anything different this is because I don't have any menus if I do a disk without menus I actually do like to add chapter points in even though I don't have any menus not for one that's 42 seconds long but suppose I had a video that's an hour long if I don't put any chapter points in there's not an easy way to skip through that so, you know, imagine you've watched half of it and you want to go back to it later on. Even without a menu, it's nice to have chapter points because you can just hit the chapter point button on your remote and you'll jump to a chapter point that was near where you finished off. So I like to put in chapter points regardless, maybe say every five minutes. In this case, I've got two chapters which are specific spaces in the video and I actually want to put those onto a menu. So I'm going to go to the basic tab and I'm going to say use menu. Now, having said use menu, these two things have lit up. So I'm going to go to the style tab and now you can see this is where I can choose a particular menu. The menus in Edius are based on templates. I'm afraid you can't make or save your own but you can take what's produced here and then customize them. There's loads and loads of templates. So you have templates which have three buttons, templates that have five buttons. Some templates like this one here can have up to ten buttons. Now you'll notice as I'm popping between them they actually only ever have one button. And the reason for that is that at the moment it's showing me, as it says here, the title menu. So that's the title, or the main menu of the DVD. And the main menu of the DVD has one button, which is that one there, which will play the video. And this particular template has another button, which is that one there, which will let me access chapters. It's not immediately obvious that that little triangle in a square accesses chapters. That's just what this template has for chapter menus. If I chose another one, you'd notice it says the word chapter instead. But let's go back to simple blue. I don't like that as a chapter menu button. I'm going to change it. Now at the moment, like I said, it's showing me the main menu. It will also have created a chapter menu. So if I click on this, it will play everything. If you click on that, it will access the chapter menu and you can choose a particular chapter. Now if I go to the Edit tab, you can see I've got the title menu, but I can click on this thing and pop into the chapter menu so you can see what both look like. I've only got one chapter menu because I've only got three chapters. If I'd had 20 chapters and I'd chosen a template that can fit 10 buttons on each menu, it would have automatically created two chapter menus with 10 on each. If I had 20 chapters and I'd chosen a menu that can fit four buttons on it, it would create five menus for me. One of the limitations of EDIUS is that once it's actually gone ahead and automatically created all these menus with chapters on, you can't take a button off one and cut it and paste it onto another and that sort of thing. It automatically creates it. Now you do have a bit of control over it depending on the template. If I come back to style here, you can see there's this auto layout thing. and I can take it off auto and I can say, you know, I want two rows and two columns, please. And then it will create for me four buttons or three rows and two columns, or three rows and three columns. So you do have some control over it, it's just not as much control as you get in other programs. 
you notice as well, since I went to the Edit tab and popped onto the Chapter menu and then came back to the Style tab, it now shows me the Chapter menu here instead of the Title menu. I'm going to go back to Edit, choose the Title menu, and come back to Style, and I'm back to seeing this. Because I've only got one timeline, it seems rather silly to have one button and a Chapter menu button. Why don't I just get rid of this and go straight to the Chapter menu? Well, because I've only got one timeline, I can do that. If I untick the No Chapter menu button, and then click the No Title Menu button, that means it only makes a chapter menu for me. In other words, this will be the menu that pops up. Now, having chosen the basics for it, I go to Edit and I start to fiddle with it. And this is where you can pick up things and move them around, make them a bit bigger, click on the icons, add some guides and line it up. Let's take that button and put it down there. And I can take the words that I've got here, double click on them, choose the typeface that I want to use, choose the color that you want to use, stick some effects on them like an edge and a shadow and so on. Take it off automatic sizing and saying what size it should be. Come out of this and then I can make the boxes in a bit bigger and so on. Having formatted those words up there, I've now got to come through and format these. So again, double click on that, choose the particular typeface, which in this case was impact and color and so on. Got to do the same for David. Nice thing is you don't actually have to come out of this box here to click on the next words. I can just go straight to the next words and then start changing it. So that's the nice thing. The bad thing is I do actually have to change the style for each of the words, I can't just select a lot and then change them all together. But once you've got that and you're happy with the layout, I've got these pictures reorganized. You notice I have a little thumbnail there from the video, which is possible to change. These words here, this is the name of the sequence. I actually don't like that at all. I'm just gonna double click on it, get rid of them completely by deleting them. So now there's no words there at all. And I, there's two things I'd like to do. I'd like to make it a moving menu and I'd like something more interesting in the background. Well, to make it a moving menu is very simple. You come up to here and you tick motion menu and now it's a moving menu. These little thumbnails will now move or animate. They'll animate from the chapter point for 12 seconds. The whole menu will fade in and fade out. Obviously, you can turn those off. It'll fade in, stay there for 12 seconds, fade out. That's how you make it a motion menu. I'd like something else in the background as well. So to do that, I'm going to come over to this list that I've got here. Now this is a list of everything that's on the DVD. So you notice as I click them, it goes through and it shows you which one is which. So yeah, that's button number two, that's button number three. At the top, you can see there is the word back. If I double click on the word back, then here you can choose a different background for the entire menu. And I've got two options. One is this, which is select a picture somewhere on your computer. It can be a picture or it can be a piece of video. If you notice down here, it takes MPEG2 video or MPEG video as a possible background. Personally, I'm just going to choose the penguins as a still image. Let's now put the penguins in the back of my image. It can be any image that you've got on the computer, so it could be an image that you've nicked out of Edius or whatever. So that's grabbing something that's on your hard drive. Click on this one and you can choose a sequence in your project. Now again, I've only got one sequence, so I can only choose that. But if I choose that, now that has become the video in the back of the menu. So these will animate and that will animate. I chose a sequence that was 42 seconds, it'll still only animate for 12 seconds and then just go back to the start. So it doesn't matter how long the sequence is, that's how long it goes for. And this is limited, depending on the type of uh, DVD that you're choosing and the frame rate, it's limited between to about 30 and 60 seconds. So you can't do very, very long menus, but then you shouldn't. Now what I tend to do is I'll make up another sequence in the project and I'll put some fancy video in there and I'll call it menu so that when I need to come in here and find it, I'll find the sequence called menu, click on it, and that puts some fancy video in the background. It doesn't even have to be a piece of video. Imagine that you want a still image with some music in the background. Well, you could do that. Have a sequence, put a still image on there with a bit of music, and then choose that as a background for your DVD. 
So it's possible to customize your menus an awful lot. It's possible to make motion menus. It's possible to put music in the background. Unfortunately, it's not possible to save out your own templates. So you can more or less do what you want with it. You're not as free with the disk writing inside of Edius as you are in, say, Adobe Encore or Sony DVD Architect, which lets you do a lot more stuff. They let you do subtitles. They let you do different audio tracks. They let you do completely customizable things with the buttons. But you can do you know, probably nearly everything you want to do with the Edius disk writing. Anyway, having done that, I'm going to come to Write. Go to the option tab, but you remember these things up here that were greyed out? Well, now I've actually got some options here. So I can say, right, what's the first thing that happens when I put the disc in? Does it show the menu or does it play the movie? I generally, if I have got a menu, I'd like the menu to be first. So I'm going to tick that. Then you choose a button and it plays a movie. And it says, OK, after playing the movie, what happens? Does it go to the menu or does it go to the next movie? Now, in this DVD, I don't have a next movie. But imagine if I had a next movie, if I had that ticked and I played title number one, after it finished, it would go on to title number two. Then it says, well, like after playing the last movie in the list, what happens? Does it stop? Does it go back to the start or does it go back to the menu? Now, what I tend to do is show the menu first, go back to the menu after playing the movie and that's it. So every time you play a whole movie, it goes back to the menu. You can't do things like, say, just play chapter one and go back to the menu, just play chapter two, or play chapter two followed by chapter five, followed by chapter seven. This is something Edius cannot do. But what it can do is a main menu and a chapter menu for everything that you've got on the disk. It does it nice and fast, and it does it from within the software. If I was making up a DVD, then I could come in here and tick DVD, but I tend not to do that because Edius has got very, very good downscaling in. So what I'd actually do is something else. So I'm going to leave it as it is for the moment. Click on Return. Save it. Go up to the Project Settings. Change it to a standard definition setting. I'm going to go back to the Settings menu. Go to Project. Change Current Setting. And make sure my sampling is set to the Lanxos, which is the best scaling that Edius does. And then I'm going to pull up Burn to Disk, switch to DVD, go to the movie. And this is where I would make a change to the settings. So I'm going to click on Setting here. And I'm going to just quickly look at the audio. Now you notice in this grayed out stuff here, it says Stream MPEG Audio Layer 2. Now there's nothing wrong with doing MPEG audio on DVDs. It's just it's not the standard way of doing it. It has been slightly less compatible than Dolby Digital, which is the standard way of doing it. So I like to take it off MPEG and put it onto Dolby. Now MPEG is not an option you'll get if you're using NTSC. It's only an option you'll get if you're in PAL land. But if you're using PAL as your video standard, then it'll default to MPEG and I like to take it off that. So I'm going to untick automatic untick automatic on the audio, click on the drop down, choose Dolby. And I'm just going to change that. And I change that for every title inside the disc. It wasn't an option when you're doing a Blu-ray because Blu-rays always default to Dolby. And if you're doing a timeline where your entire timeline is say surround sound, then it'll always default to Dolby. But if you're just doing a stereo timeline, it'll probably default to MPEG. So I like to change that. Beyond that, Everything else for the DVD is the same as it was for a Blu-ray. So you set your styles up, you edit the menus, you go to write, and then you write the disc. So that's the one thing that I would change when I'm making a DVD. To be honest, when I changed the project settings here, I did skip very, very slightly a, pass, a couple of potential problems. For example, here, you notice my titles have disappeared because there are some things that don't scale properly when you change project settings. But we do talk about that a lot more in depth in the full EDIUS tutorial. But the main thing is when you're making up a DVD, it's pretty much the same as a Blu-ray disc. Burn to disc, make sure it's on DVD, go into the settings, make sure it's on Dolby.